Well, hello, my name is Brian. And I'm Brian. And this is Brian versus Brian, episode 21, I believe. I believe we're past the 20s. Um, today, we're going to talk about the little Christmas gift HBO gave us, their beginning of their in theater streams. And today, we're going to get y'all woke with this woke <laughs> piece of 2020 cinema. So I know it's morning time. Grab your coffee. Wake up and get woke. Here we go. So, like we were just saying, I totally forgot that this was coming out. I mean, Christmas, you got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. And so I woke up and we did presents. And then, you know, it's always like after presents, there's not much to do. Maybe you eat or something, but it's kind of a chill, laid back day and you don't do much. Unless maybe you got big family plans, but I imagine most people didn't during this. Yeah, I kind of um, just fuck around with my gifts, depending on what my gifts are. Like, yeah. if it's a book or something or whatever, a movie, it kind of just pick around in the things that i got for a little while totally um so yeah then i was like i saw like an ad on facebook or something or youtube i was like oh shit wonder woman today that's pretty cool that's something to do Mm -hmm. so i watched that oh i got about halfway through it because we had some things to do and uh then i had to finish the next half the next day but uh pretty pretty cool pretty sweet i enjoyed that it's 4k this is the first 4k content on a uh, on hbo max i watched, started watching it on my computer which is 4k but it's very small so i was like dude i need to move to the tv i mean this first 4k movie that they've done i need to do it justice on the on the big screen so before we go into what we thought about the movie i, I should uh I don't know. We should take it piece by piece. I think ease into the ease into it a little bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. So P- Patty Jenkins uh, did the first one. She's a woman. If you didn't know that she's a director woman. Um, for, well, first of all, what was your thoughts on the first Wonder Woman? Uh, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I think it's, you can't ignore the fact that it's a pretty big deal, the first one. Um, and it was a big deal for a lot of people, mainly which, you know, it was our first female superhero movie, which is a pretty fucking big deal. Um, took them long enough. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty great. And I think that, you know, I'm glad that we finally got to that point. Um, but aside from that, I thought the movie was pretty good. I didn't think it was a masterpiece, but I mean... I thought it was entertaining and fun. I think I, I talked about it loosely on our um, on our DC panel, I believe. Yeah, that I think the strength of the first one is Gal Gadot and Chris Pine's uh, chemistry and their characters. I think the um, they kind of elevate that movie quite a bit. I, I felt em- emotionally connected to those characters. Um, but overall, I think there's some cool sequences, but. I kind of was just like, yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, and, and the other thing that I thought was important about Wonder Woman was that it really put DC on the right course for a lot of people. I think Batman, I think Man of Steel and Batman v Superman left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. I wasn't one of them. I, I actually enjoyed both of those movies, but a lot of people didn't. And Wonder Woman came out and, you know, it was a critical darling and everyone loved it. And it kind of set DC in a, in a new path, um, kind of paved the way for Aquaman and Shazam and some of these other later ones. But so, yeah, yeah. overall, I thought it was pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, they start to pave the path and then they take out a jackhammer and dismantle the path. This is what they do. <laughs> this this was pretty good. Batman versus Superman. I still love it. Uh, it's got its problems uh, but i think my favorite dc eu movie or it's got to be man of steel still i think it's a great superman movie it's a great movie mm-hmm. and i think it's none none of them have lived up to that i liked aquaman the first time and then i watch it again i'm like man this is just a super generic boring movie yeah and there's just too much cg with all this water stuff it's just uh, it's just too crazy um yeah, I liked Wonder Woman. I didn't think it was great either. Uh, um, it was fun. It's kind of strange that she's such a powerful um, woman icon and these movies are so important. And then she's running around in this tiny little top and skirt. Mm. 
the whole yeah. time. I'm like, I'm surprised they didn't change the outfit and make it a little more less revealing. Yeah, because for, <clears throat> for for the kids and whatnot, because it's just a huge role model. It's so important for a superhero. Hey, I ain't complaining. <laughs> Gal Gadot, let me tell you what, man, she is a pretty beautiful person. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of surprised me. And this one, they they cover her up, put her in the layer, her in gold, and yeah, every ounce of skin is covered. That I, for no fucking reason, I don't, I didn't really understand why they had to put this outfit in the movie. It just seemed like a a visual thing they wanted to do, like this cool yeah. gold motif. It's pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I thought that suit was pretty badass. <laughs> it was a pretty cool suit. That's <laughs> pretty cool. Once the wings were off of it, it was pretty cool. Like the wings, it was a little dumb. But yeah. once it was a suit, it was pretty dope. So we both thought Wonder Woman was okay. Going into this one, um, there's some questions we don't know. We've, you've seen the trailers, right? No, I stayed away. But I... The only well, thing I really I knew it took, obviously takes place in the '80s, and I yeah. knew that uh, Chris Pine would be back. I didn't know how, but I knew that he was going to be back. That's all I really knew. Yeah, so that was kind of a weird thing. I wondered how they were going to do that, and they did it kind of weird. But mm-hmm. I was okay with it. I guess after a while, you kind of get into it. But when it first started happening, I was like, "What the fuck is this? It's a weird way to do it." Mm-hmm. Um, but so. Just right off the bat, I thought this movie visually just looked awesome. It just reminded me of like a, maybe the old TV show. It just had like, I don't know, like an 80s uh, movie or sitcom like vibe to it. And I just mm-hmm. loved the, the periodness of it. Yeah. I just think the 80s was a perfect setting for this movie. It looked great. Um, I really liked all the characters. Like Kristen Wiig did a really good job as a awkward girl. Imagine that. And then even she did great, you know, coming into the character and having to be the villain. I thought that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, Mando, Pedro Pascal, I thought he did really good. I, I thought his character was fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. Like perfect, like quintessential sleazy 80s uh con man uh i'm not a con this, man <laughs> yeah yeah he had this weird accent i'm not a loser <laughs> yeah it's a weird accent you start to feel for him you really do and it's like i thought he did great good character um chris pine coming back so the pedro pascal character this is there's a stone that grants wishes right and that's how um, the Cheetah character becomes Cheetah. She wishes she was like uh, Wonder Diana. Woman. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Diana, the woman. She, she worked together in a museum for some reason. She wishes she was like her because Diana's the sexy, cool. Everyone likes her. She can walk in heels, and I can't. And so she wishes she was like her. Unbeknownst to her, she's an Amazonian warrior, and she also inherits that power. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and then Wonder Woman's wish is to have Chris Pine back. And uh, so he comes back. The, the way he came back, I thought was kind of weird. Like, it's just some random guy. Yeah. Just some random guy. She's like, you've been following me. And he's like, ah, ugh, you know who I am? And then he starts quoting off stuff that only Chris would know. Um, or not Chris, but damn it. What's that character's uh, name? Steve. Steve. That only Steve would know. And... Um, yeah, so she realizes it's him, and it's a, it's a warm moment. But I was just like, what happened to the guy that was in that body? It's like, does he just die? That's not fair. Yeah, that was confusing. I didn't know. So my interpretation at first was that he, that guy still looks like that guy, but she sees yeah. Steve. Like, Steve is taking exactly. over that body, but... but uh diana sees steve and not that guy but when they're walking around doing shit it's that guy yeah that's how i understood it <clears throat> yeah but where is that guy because it's now steve so that guy's soul and personality oh, yeah, is, is gone yeah. that's not fair to him all of a sudden he just like and what what made the world pick him you know okay mm-hmm. you can have him back but this guy's life is gone yeah i was like well that's it was also up. weird that she never wished for him 
Everybody in this movie verbally says, I wish for it. Uh, Diana never says, I wish for Steve to come back. She thinks it and it happens. So I'm like, well, how does a stone work? Do you have yeah, to good verbally point. say it or can you just think it? Because Diana just thought it and he came back. So that was kind of confusing. Good point. Because it seemed like everybody mm -hmm. else really had to uh, state it, didn't they? Yeah. And then, of course, the stone gives you something, but it takes away something of equal value. That's a little quid pro quo for you. Mm -hmm. um, so she does take away. She's powerful and she's becoming like Wonder Woman. But her takeaway was what? Her like personality. She's not nice anymore. She's not uh, innocent anymore. She's just becoming a jerk. Yeah. yeah. She's like consumed by the power of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As the yeah big, big surprise as the villain. Yeah. And then Diana's takeaway is her power slowly start to fade. From having a uh, her her man back, um, so that was kind of cool to give and take. Um, that what a really wacky premise though, for a, mm -hmm. a superhero movie of wishes and stuff. And yeah, yeah, Pedro, he wishes he knows about the stone for some reason, gets it, and then he wishes to be the stone, so he can create wishes. Um, and so he is the stone, and now he makes he touches people and like asks them what they wish and so he's doing it as a way to be able to take something from them like i wish for a million dollars where well, you're going to get a million dollars but i'm going to take you know everything in your life other than that million dollars so that was interesting uh so he's not really like a a villain that can fight diana you know that's why they had that cheetah in there yeah um so what do you think about all this so far would you like pedro and that character i thought that character was so sweet uh i thought he was fine oh. um <laughs> well here i'll, I'll just, i'm gonna just do an overall thing real quick so i didn't like this movie too much i think it has some some fun stuff um but overall i think my biggest issue or two biggest issues i didn't have anything emotionally to connect with and that i think that's because there's three movies in this two and a half hour runtime and like none of these three movies have enough time to really develop um so like the first movie in this movie is two friends who bond and connect and one of them turns to the dark side and one and the other one has to convince them to come back to the light and fails that's that's a movie in here the second movie is a megal maniac who's obsessed with power takes people's wishes for his own gain and only wonder woman can stop him that's the second movie and the third movie is a woman who longs for her dead partner and finally gets a second chance of being with him again and then she has to learn that you have to let him go and move on and so there's like three fucking movies in this <laughs> two and a half hour runtime and they don't really have time to develop all three of those so i the whole time i'm like i'm not connecting to any of this like kristen wig like the first probably 30 40 minutes is story number one and two which is the friendship and seeing the the friend kind of go to the dark side and then the other movie is the pedro stuff and then somewhere half along the way, they introduced the third movie, which they, they put Steve back in there for no reason. But they could have easily just picked one of these fucking stories and just had fun with that and be a little more narrow. And I don't know. I got a lot of flashbacks to Iron Man 2, which Iron Man 2 is a good movie. It's fun. But that movie also feels overstuffed and kind of just like meh. And that's kind of how I felt about this one, where it just felt overstuffed and just meh. Um, no. But that's just me. I don't know. And I this wasn't. Is... I looked. I looked at Sarah. Sarah was a little more forgiving than I am. I'm like, what do you think? She's like, no, <laughs> wasn't really good. I was like, all right, well, this I guess I'm is, alone in this one. This is no Iron Man two. Iron Man two was <clears throat> full of a bunch of bullshit. Race car scene, fucking uh, war machine. It had too much going on. The robots. This just has three plot points, three interweaving plot lines. Um, and all of which were decent. I mean, you can't have Pedro without a real villain because he, he serves no real danger to Diana at all. Yeah. Um, and you can't have Cheetah probably without uh, Pedro because there's no origin story for her and there's just no, um, it's just boring, you know, a Wonder Woman versus a Wonder Woman. Um, yeah, I think those stories can mesh well. And I think they do. I think the first 40 minutes 
has a nice pace to it. I think maybe when I'm when I'm just talking to you about this, just kind of <laughs> literally in real time <laughs> expressing my thoughts. But I think maybe my issue is that Steve's in this movie. Like, how many times have we seen Diana fucking grieve over Steve and all the, all her little movies? She she like Justice League and Batman v Superman. She's always, oh, I miss Steve, and it's like. Can't we just have this character fucking move on? Like, why do we keep bringing Steve back? Like, why can't yeah. she just move on? Like, he didn't need to be in this movie. That could have just been the Cheetah Pedro movie, and she needs to find out how to stop them. But we kind of go off in this weird, you know, go down a weird path with the Steve character. Which don't get me wrong, I like Chris Pine. And I like I like that character. But I thought like, the I thought the Steve stuff was fun, and uh, it's her, her only connection to our world. Uh, like humans, she's not a human, right? Amazonian or something. Yeah. Uh, but it's her only connection to our world, and she longs for that connection again. And uh, I thought it was a great storyline about uh, loss, about um, giving up the one thing you want the most to help uh, others. I thought it was, had some great uh, typical superhero um, messages, and these are the big, the big messages that the big uh you know classic 1940s and 50s messages like superman mm-hmm. always does but marvel doesn't really do it like this they don't get into the cheesy give up everything and help everyone else yeah superman a lot of the dc does this the golden age kind of uh story arcs um and i liked it and chris coming back was a really fun i thought it was a really funny part of the movie yeah i don't want to say funny because it wasn't I don't feel like it was played for comedy too much, but it was fun. All the, the when he's dressing up and all mm-hmm. the 80s clothes. And I, that's why I love this as a, a timepiece. And he's like, really cool. Um, enjoyed all that stuff. Um, and then another, they, they tried to do some things and bring some things into the world that people didn't think they'd be able to do, like the invisible jet. Yeah, everyone's I didn't like, see that coming. Yeah. Everyone's like, you can't do the invisible jet. That's so stupid. How is it ever going to work? Yeah. The way they did it worked pretty well. I liked it. I I don't uh, uh, <laughs> I liked it a lot. I'm glad they put this in the movie. But I feel like kind of like we talked about Tenet, where Tenet has uh, does set up and payoffs really well. I thought it would have been kind of cooler if it would have been set up earlier in the movie. Like maybe she's at her house and she's trying to make something invisible, or she, and she can't do it, or something. I don't know. Something where we're like, oh, what's where, where's this going to go? And then later on in the movie, she she does it because it kind of comes out of left field. Like, how are we going to get out of the situation? Well, I could just turn this jet invisible. And you're like, wait, what? So I don't know. I thought it would have been cooler if they yeah. would have set something up early on that maybe she's trying to work on that kind of thing. And I don't know. But it was still cool to see. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. And the way she explained it, she's like, uh, what did I say? I had a relative once that taught me how to make something invisible. It was like it's a like, coffee what? cup or something. Well, what? it's like, yeah, I made a coffee cup invisible. How did that work out? She's like, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. How'd you uh, like uh, her flying after she lost Steve? So that was kind of a cool moment. Yeah, that was, well, cool. it was a little cheesy, but it was fun. What does Wonder Woman fly in the other movies? I don't even remember. Um, and like Batman versus Superman, she does kind of like fly. Yeah, I guess she does fly. Yeah, yeah. But I always thought she was just doing like a hyper jump in my mind yeah. you know the the classic superman or whatever superhero hulk i guess is a good example hyper jumpers mm-hmm. um yeah i i liked that part that was pretty cool because use the wind <laughs> she's yeah <laughs> so, feeling the wind under your arms and making you i don't think that's how it would work yeah your arms don't have enough lift but that's it's still it was still a cool moment. Yeah. And they need to explain how the hell she's flying around in these movies. Uh, yeah, that was cool. Um, what else, man? Yeah, the end, the middle and the end start to get really crazy. Uh, I like all the stuff they, they're able to do with the 1980s uh, time. Uh it was like you you've seen stranger things yeah i've seen season one and three okay well season three the 80s one where it's like yeah it's like of the same time period i just kept thinking we're in stranger things they kept showing that mall 
they're in the mall in Wonder Woman. Yeah. I, was like, this, I th- feel like this is the same damn mall. <laughs> same set. Like like scoops of hoys over here and. I thought that yeah. scene was pretty awesome. And that may be my favorite scene because it's the most fun the movie has. Like it reminded me of the old Christopher Reeve Superman, just like a lighthearted. She's coming in to save the day and she's winking at the little kid at the end. I don't know. Yeah. I thought that was pretty fun. Yeah. That, this whole movie reminded me kind of the Christopher Reeve days and uh, the, what is her name? Linda Cartwright. They're, oh, the original Wonder Woman. Yeah. The Wonder Woman show. I heard she was in this movie at a cameo. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember seeing her though. She's in the middle of the credits. Oh, okay. I didn't watch through the credits. There's credit scenes. God damn it. There's just one. You didn't miss much. All right. But yeah, I thought this this movie, I liked it. I liked it more than the original Wonder Woman. And I, I've heard some, some critics are pretty divided on this movie. I've heard some say they like it better than the first. and Some tear it apart. I don't know why you would tear it apart. I mean. DC no. has done DC's done far worse than this. I agree. Um, Which is why I'm trying to be careful and like I'm not trying to tear. I'm you know I think there's a lot of parts in this movie I like and I, overall I think it's a pretty good movie. I just think that it's a little overstuffed and there just wasn't a lot for me to connect to. Other than that, I think there's yeah. some cool stuff in there. <clears throat> I think people are trying to make superhero movies these like superhero epics that stand the test of time and it's really only like the Batman movies that do that. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, maybe the first Iron Man. I mean, that's a fucking amazing movie. Uh, but other than that, I really like Man of Steel, but I don't know if it's gonna get to that echelon. So I, I think people are just asking too much of these now because they do so well yeah. and they're so popular. But this was a fun romp. It was an awesome, fun thing to do on Christmas. A, f- a little gift from HBO. It was fun. I loved the the setting it's just like i was had a smile like sitting through this whole movie like i enjoyed watching this movie i wasn't a chore uh i I felt a little felt a little chorey the first wonder woman i don't know i mean because the origin you always got to get through the origin it's just a little draggy yeah but uh this one it was just it was fun the whole time i you know if i had to say I would definitely recommend it, first of all. And then I would probably give this movie like, a, you know, a seven, like a mm-hmm. high seven, maybe 7.5. So yeah. it, it's a good it's a good movie. It's not a great movie. It's not a bad yeah, movie. I'd probably give it like a six. That's probably where I would stand on it. Oh, I got to talk about the thing that I think pissed Sarah and I, Sarah and I off the most, which is how did you feel about when Wonder Woman looked right into the camera and said, don't lie, be a good person, everybody. <laughs> right at the very end but god damn it how fucking on the nose do you need to be uh <laughs> no it was pretty yeah rough. that was pretty weird yeah uh, and he's like she's like oh yeah i was ta- i wasn't talking to you i was talking to the audience and he's like oh <laughs> i'm the audience <laughs> yeah that yeah. was a little rough a little, and, a little uh, pandering a little bit <clears throat> and then her her killing Kristen Wiig's character, Cheetah, that was pretty that was pretty intense. She's like, give up your wish. I won't. Well, then sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> it's like this fight's over, I'm gonna kill you. And yeah. I don't understand like Linda's immune to electricity. It's like, what are you how are you gonna electrocute yeah, the you know, electrocute the pool you're in? You're in it too. I don't know. Well, che- uh, the Barbara lives, the Cheetah. Does she? Yeah, there's that scene at the very end. She's like sitting in front of a sunset and she's fucking all fucked up. No, oh, huh. I, right? I don't, I don't remember, remember that. Maybe yeah. that's a, in the credits part. I don't know. I don't remember that. I thought she died. No, it was pretty- like, it was like, I think it was intercut with, uh, or it was either before or after that whole, uh, um, the whole pay- Max scene when he's looking for a son. I think it may either happen before that or after. But yeah, she's like on the rocks and there's like the sunset and she's all fucked up. But <clears throat> I loved that that last scene with uh, his son. Uh, I thought that was really touching and emotional. That was pretty cool. Uh, that part, you know, I kind of welled up a little bit. That fucking when uh, Wonder Woman has to give up her man, I welled up a little bit. She yeah. turns the corner. 
and then you just you don't see Steve anymore. You just hear him and say, "No matter where I am, I'll always love you." Yeah, just got to run with the tears flipping back. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I liked it. It was just some <laughs> emotional, some emotional parts in this. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, 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 I enjoyed it. I don't want to go too hard because it sounds like this movie's a masterpiece or something. But yeah, I yeah, I really liked it. I didn't. It was, wasn't a chore having to research this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, and where it fits in with DC, uh, I think it's better than most things they've put out. They haven't done a lot of great stuff, DC. And when I say DC, I'm talking about the DC universe, not fucking every DC movie ever, because you know, all, obviously Batman, right? Superman knocked, it, and, knocked it out of the park, and Superman has had their own thing going. And we all know the best DC movie, Superman Returns. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> What's that guy who directed that? Brian Singer, movies. the pedophile. Yeah, Brian Singer. Or not pedophile, the whatever the fuck he is. I think you're correct. <laughs> i think you're correct it's fucked up uh yeah i was, was kind of hoping this movie like i'm sorry to keep fucking bashing on this movie i promise everybody i didn't hate it as much as i may be coming off but you know some of the great sequels uh and particularly like superheroes because this is kind of the topic we're on but you look at like some of the best sequels like the dark knight right and you look at Bruce at the end of The Dark Knight, he's a completely different Bruce than he was in the beginning. And it's because of the events of The Dark Knight, of like him coming across, coming in the path of somebody he doesn't understand and doesn't know how to deal with. He loses his love of his life. Like all these things affect him and go into The Dark Knight Rises. Or like even Winter Soldier, where like at the end of The Winter Soldier, Steve doesn't trust the government that he once loved and fought for, like because of the events of The Winter Soldier. Like he's changed because of the events of that movie and it leads into the civil war but this movie it just felt like a standalone side thing like i don't think this really advanced diana that much as a character like well she just she's always pining for steve and she got him back i mean i guess you can in the sense that you know maybe she can move on maybe that's the growth but she didn't feel very much different than she did in the beginning of the movie and so i don't know i think that they kind of wasted opportunity a little bit to kind of advance her character a little more I, well, I think it's hard to do that at all when you yeah. do this, when you jump in the timeline like this. Because we've mm -hmm. seen Wonder Woman in like World War I, like 1917. We've seen Wonder Woman in modern times in uh, be Batman vs. Superman and Justice League. And so all you have is to fill in the time. That's all you can do. So yeah. you, can't, you can't drastically have the character change in a movie when you know what she's like later, it's like, what if they had a big character change in this movie? And then you watch Batman versus Superman. I was like, well, well that doesn't mess with that movie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess. You know what sense. I mean? Yeah. And it's like Patty Jenkins talked about this. She's like, out of respect for, uh, Zack Snyder, I couldn't change too much about the character. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't want to like change her costume. Cause if you change the costume though, why should she go back to it later and BVS and, all this stuff. Right. So it's like, yeah, when you're jumping around this timeline, the way DC has done it, uh, kind of, there's not much you can do with the character. And so I feel that's a good reason why that didn't happen. They're just kind of trapped in this, like, what are you going to do? Yeah. You want to show what happened in between, but you can't go too far because it's got to match with the beginning. It's got to match with the end. Which I don't know so, why they didn't just set this movie in modern times. There's no reason this movie is set in the 80s that I can think of, other than I think people just like the 80s. But I mean, there's nothing about this movie that it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, that it I has love to it. take place in the 80s. I but. love it. <laughs> it's so much cooler. The clothes, everything's cooler, man. I was just like yeah. telling Jesse when we're watching it, I was like, God damn, I wish we were, I wish this was 1984 right now. And we were it's our funny, age. I, I'm waiting for the fucking all these 90s movies because I, I was I mean, I was born in the 80s, but my childhood is 90s. I want the fucking the movies that it has the music and the and the grunge and the the wardrobe. Like I want some 90s, you know, 90s rejuvenation. Is, 90s is cool, but I think the 80s is just a little more out there. Yeah. 90s. More vibrant. 90s, is, you could tell it, but some 90s stuff was pretty subdued. You know, if like you saw something from the 90s, you could be like, oh, when was that? There's no mistake in the 80s in that shit. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, I hope they keep doing this. Like Wonder Woman 84, Wonder Woman 94, Wonder Woman 2004. <laughs> Just do it every <laughs> every four, 2014. Yeah. And so it's like her and Batman versus Superman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was kind of hoping they would do like, this is 84. There's got to be, there has to be a fucking nightclub goofy pop song with the, the fucking everything's all lit up and someone's doing coke in the bathroom like give me something <laughs> give me something <laughs> uh yeah they didn't really yeah they went pretty pg with everything didn't they oh yeah. except that one guy that kept trying to rape everybody <laughs> yeah what the fuck like, was some, that? <laughs> some drunk guy that's like hey come here girl <laughs> he just sits on the corner waiting to rape you <laughs> i feel like, like all the male characters are virtually like predators in this movie. Like every time they walk somewhere, hey, what up, girl? <laughs> like every male character is pretty. Maybe that's maybe there's some truth to that, but it felt a little uh, a little much. Now it was in the eighties. You didn't want to walk down the street. Yeah. You're a woman. It's always a drunk. Uh, yeah, so that character was pretty funny. And then then you kind of feel bad for him because he already got his ass kicked the first time by Diana, and then she really kicks the shit out of him the second time. Yeah, and she's friends with the homeless people, and that friendly old man. She always gives her food to. <laughs> what are you doing to him? Yeah, you mind your goddamn business. <laughs> That's not the girl I knew. So yeah, uh, yeah, that was weird. When she was beating the shit out of him, I was kind of like, I think this movie wants me to feel bad for them, but I kind of didn't because he's just a fucking rapey douchebag. I'm like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Beat his ass. I was kind of thinking, like, what would I? I wonder if they if they should have done like maybe he's wearing something different. He's wearing the same fucking clothes for some reason because we need to know that he's the same guy for some reason. Yeah. But maybe he could be like walking with his kids or something, or like something where you can see a little humanity in him. He's not. Maybe he was just a drunken fucking piece of shit that night. And then when she sees him with his family, maybe with his wife at dinner, and she like interjects like, "Hey, motherfucker!" and she beats his ass from his kids. Like that would be like, whoa. Now she's really turned into the dark side a little bit. But when she just sees him on the street and he's still being rapey to her and he, and she beats him up, I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> you kind of deserve that. I don't, I didn't see the darkness that much, but yeah. I don't know. I, I was just trying to think of things that maybe that could have helped that scene a little more. Just yeah. have her a little more dark. I felt bad for him. Yeah. Because, you know, he didn't deserve to, because she just kept going. And it was yeah. a good, it was a good part of the movie to uh, show what their strength is like compared to an actual normal human yeah right because usually when they're in these fights with a kick you know you kick diana across the fucking room she goes to a wall and she gets rid of that kind of hurt but mm -hmm. this guy you know she kicks him across the fucking street and he's really like literally like dying almost you know he's just like crawling and it's just yeah e extreme pain and she keeps doing it and so i think it was a good way to show you know she's she's ready to kill this guy mm -hmm who really all he did was grab someone's arm and say some sexual innuendo, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah. she's ready to murder him. So let's, let's go let's back up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah, I thought that was a good scene to show, you know, how powerful someone is compared to a human. Cause you know, they're always fighting each other. So you can't really tell. Right. Them. And so I've, you know, I felt bad for him. I was like, yeah, guy's a piece of shit and he deserves his ass whoop, but, ass whooping went on for like yeah it went on too like, long like seven kicks like yeah. she just kicked i was like she's still kicking him and every kick he's like going 20 feet yeah and she like stomps like, on his head or at the end or something yeah like, that's crazy i should have just showed that water yeah. fucking watermelon his ass gallagher his ass <laughs> hey y'all ready, ready to smash some fruit <laughs> um that reminds me of speaking of fighting and kicking. I thought the White House stuff was pretty cool. I thought that was pretty fun action set piece. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty sweet. And I liked how she's like, uh, it's always a fucking superhero movie. You can't kill. We can't kill. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can't kill. <laughs> she goes like out of her way to make sure that no one dies. Yeah. And Steve is like, gets a gun. And Oh, I can't use it. Oh, damn. <laughs> Would you want to just shoot this guy in the face? Yeah, right in the face. <laughs> Fucking John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I totally would have gun caught at your ass, bro. Yeah. But yeah, that I love that. Uh, every time there's a fight scene, <clears throat> there's that cool camera movement where she slides on her knees and the camera fucking flies with her. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I love that shit every time it happens. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like a, you gotta have the, 
the video game slides. Yeah. She's good at it, but you know, she never has her knees covered or her legs. She's got to have some gnarly burns. <laughs> Raspberries. <clears throat> yeah. And like Batman versus Superman, it's all like cement. And she's doing it. Like, this is a st- <laughs> streak of blood on the concrete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought that fight scene was pretty cool. Yeah. There's lots of, lots of lasso of truth being used in this and i think it's a cool effect it looks good mm-hmm. uh really cool uh you learn more about it. it doesn't just make you tell the truth it also shows you the truth mm-hmm. it's like okay it things. and it makes cups invisible mm-hmm. some shit but yeah i mean as the first one on hbo max that you know is theater was theater bound? It is in theaters right now, apparently somewhere. I don't know where. Minnesota or something. If your state's yeah. not locked down, you can go see this. Florida. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Florida don't give a fuck. <laughs> hell yeah, man. <laughs> fuck yeah. Oh man, what a place. <laughs> Florida ain't gonna. Florida ain't gonna like this movie. She puts on more clothes by the end. Yeah. The fuck is this? <laughs> Trailer, she got a little skirt on. Now she got a goddamn pantsuit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's the first one that's was theater bound. I really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to all these movies now. I mean, it's gonna be this is really cool, fun thing. We get to watch these at home, and these people get to have their vision seen. You know, we spend this much money and this much time in making something. You just you just want it to be seen. Um, you know, I've done some amateur stuff, film, music. And it's like, you don't care. You're not trying to... You, I mean, these people already are famous. It's not about the fame or the infamy or the money. It's like, you really want your shit to be seen and yeah. to know that somebody else likes what you did, appreciates what you did. So that's that's good. We get to get this out there. Agreed. Yeah, I enjoy watching at home. I think, you know, I didn't mind not seeing this in theaters. I mean, I don't even know if I would have if if things were normal. Um, just because I wasn't all that thrilled to see it. But um, something like Tenet, I was pretty bummed. I mean, I, I, I love the movie, don't get me wrong. But <clears throat> I would have loved to seen that fucking movie in the IMAX, that opening scene with the score kicks in. Anyways. Um yeah. I was worried coming into this movie that because I, I have HBO Max. I've had it for a while. And there's times where I've been watching a show and it just like cuts out. So it's like, oops, something, something's happening. Oh. And I'm like, fuck, dude, if all these subscribers are now on HBO Max, like what are their, you know, how are they going to deal with all this shit? Like, am I going to be halfway through Wonder Woman and I'm going to get fucking cut out? Luckily, it didn't happen. I got to see the whole thing without any interruptions. So I was pretty happy. But I, I was... um I was thinking about before I started. I'm like, God, I really hope this doesn't cut out on me halfway. Um, And I saw on Twitter that it is happening to some people, which kind of sucks, but kind of is what it is. Yeah, I've never really had happy. Happy it's out there, man. Happy it's out. Sweet. Yeah, I never really had that issue with HBO Max. Um, I mean, that's an issue with all streamers, but HBO Max has been pretty reliable for me for the most part. Um. Yeah, it's a kind of the Wonder Woman resurgence over there. They just got the TV show, too, the, if you're into that. The mm-hmm. old 80s or 70s. I don't know when it came out. Uh, yeah, you were bringing up these uh, these other movies that, you know, I um, I share your enthusiasm about watching them. Um, I'm really fucking, like, curior- curious to see how this is going to continue to go down because I feel like every time I look into it, there's some lawsuit or some directors or somebody producers that are really upset with wb so i'm, I'm wondering um yeah it's gonna be exciting to see what happens in the future but uh i do share your enthusiasm of watching mortal Kombat and fucking some of these other ones and like i said in our, our episode about it if theaters are open and the matrix is out i'm obviously gonna see the matrix and theaters are dune but still pretty weird times man weird and uncharted territory we're in <clears throat> Yeah, definitely. Um, so the thing is, uh, yeah, Warner Brothers is owned by uh, AT&T. 
and AT and T bought Warner Brothers a, a while back, and AT and T offers HBO Max <clears throat> with its phone plan. It's the premium mm-hmm. one. So it's all of us like, like a big, it's a big like pyramid scheme, right? I'm AT and T. Put all those movies onto HBO Max, and then if you want HBO Max, we offer that here at AT and T with our premium subscription. Unlimited minutes, unlimited movies. This is a weird. It's a big. It's a weird thing, uh, and all these people suing them. I don't think that's <clears> gonna <throat> do much because. Uh, I mean, Warner Brothers is the distributor of the movie. Yeah. I would think that they have the right to distribute the movie any way they see fit. Even, you know, but I just don't think anyone anticipated this because that's never happened. But they are the distributor. The distributor is in charge of where the movie releases, how the movie releases, you know, things such as that. So I feel like there's probably language in the contract that Warner Brothers have all rights to distribution rights and in, in in perpetuity da, 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 da. so yeah. it's, it's probably all in there but it's no one... it kind of it kind of reminds me of like a cyber or a, a, a not cyberpunk a cd project red situation where it's like <clears throat> they intentionally hid something from a large amount of people and they got a lot of blowback and i think that warner brothers did the same like i don't think they called christopher nolan i don't think they i think the only people they probably talked to was the wonder woman crew um but all these directors they're having all these that made these movies woke up one morning <clears throat> and saw the news like we did. And I can imagine just being fucking pissed off about that. And I totally get it. And I think there are like co-distributors or not distributors, but you know, like production companies that didn't get a heads up either. They just woke up and said, wait a minute, God, the Godzilla movie we funded is going on to HBO max and blah, blah, blah. Like, so there's a lot of weird fucking back end shit. Um, that we don't probably don't know about that's that's happening. So it'll be curious to see how it all um, comes together. <clears throat> I don't know why Christopher Nolan is even opening his fucking mouth. Your movie wasn't even involved in this. It's like your movie <laughs> you can't even rent your movie. You have to buy it. Yeah. Uh, it's not on HBO. And uh, a lot of movie, a lot of people didn't like your movie, sir. I did, mm-hmm. but. Maybe you're better off with this this way. I don't know. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens with this because we'll see how uh, this next year goes with the vaccine and whatnot, and if we can get back to some yeah n- normality. And we'll see if once with that does happen, if these theaters even have enough money left to you know continue the way they have. We might lose a lot of theaters. We'll see what the theater landscape even looks like once it finally is able to get back. You know, yeah, there's, people- there's like two chains of th- yeah. How many people are going to go? But yeah, there's like two two chain of thoughts with that is that we've been cooped up for so long that we are going to go back and do these things. But the yeah. other end is like, no, because a lot of people are still scared. They're not going to go. And the fact that we've just grown accustomed to doing things at home. You know, why would? people i mean i heard a coworker go off the other day about like movie theaters should die there's no like utility for them like we can literally watch things at home so they don't need to exist i didn't say anything kind of kept my mouth shut because you know me i'm a, a huge theater supporter but i think yeah. at the end of the day what theater support is i think we as a society like um communal spaces whether it's you know we can drink at home, but we like to go to bars. We can watch sports at home, but we like to go to stadiums with other people and enjoy things. And I think the theaters are no different. We like to go sit in a theater with a bunch of people and laugh, have a good time. So when you take that away and you you just put pajamas on and watch things on your couch, you kind of lose that a little bit. So I think that's kind of the the purpose of theaters. But for sure, I digress. <clears throat> but with that logic, it's like, yeah, we have we have CDs. Who needs concerts? I can listen yeah. to that at home. <laughs> I don't need these motherfuckers. <laughs> Tickets fifty bucks. A CD's twelve. Why, yeah. would, why would I waste my time? Sounds better on the disc. <laughs> this guy sounds like shit live. <laughs> He's all hoarse and drunk and barely right. remember the words. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Uh, real quick before we get out of here, what did you think about uh, that the, that Tom Cruise going off from a COVID on set? Huh? You had any thoughts on that? uh not really i mean he's trying to keep his job and 
keep the other people around and keep their job. And so he was just yeah. fucking pissed off. And I don't, I don't blame him or I don't begrudge him. He's just, everything's probably, I mean, film sets are already fucking stressful enough as it is. Like film sets are, <laughs> are hell holes, or they can be. So like when you get all that fucking pent up shit and you know, the world's weird and someone's not following the rules and yeah, yeah. maybe you deserve I, to get fucking called out. I liked it. I fucking, yeah. I like Tom Cruise more after that. Yeah. I was like, fuck yeah, dude. And everything he said is like, this is a fucking, we're trying to save our industry and you're here. Fuck it. You can't wear a fucking mask, bitch. Oh yeah. It's I never happens sometimes. again. Actually, speaking of Tom Cruise, <laughs> stick with me. Keep him, keep him entertained for 30 seconds. Keep him entertained. It reminds me of a Lex Grossman moment. This dude's got his big hands. Uh, I don't know. What, what was he? he must have got some Tom Cruise gift. He's got a picture of a dog back there. Let's just judge his home. Ethan, Luther, Benji, and Elsa. Boom. What the fuck is that? Those are all the fucking Mission Impossible characters. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stopped after the first one. I watched that first one. I've what? Never seen, you I've haven't never seen, seen the fucking new Mission Impossible movies? I haven't Holy known. shit, dude. You are um you need to binge watch some movies, my friend. I've just never really liked Tom Cruise. And like people love him. Yeah, I, I should watch those. There's you like eight of them 100% now. Hundred percent watch those, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I like him after that. And everyone tried to give him shit, and then like everyone in the entertainment community say, Yeah, fuck. Makes sense. <laughs> He's no yeah. Christian Bale, he's not just being an asshole to be an asshole. Yeah. All right, man. So yeah, uh, pretty good movie. Um, one of us liked it more than the other, but neither of us is saying it's bad. Um, yeah. So that's a pretty good sign. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, I think six out of seven, if, or six out of seven, six out of ten, <laughs> if I were to rate it. Six out of seven is pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I like to give a, a movie a number, uh, like a seven, and then people are like, "Well, that's pretty good." Well, it's out of one hundred ninety-seven. So <laughs> this is an arbitrary scale I make up for every movie. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give it a seven. I went, I went, I went a little too high to say in 7.5. It's a seven. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, go ahead and watch this movie, man. If you got HBO Max, what a nice little Christmas treat. It's only going to be around for 30 days. So that's mm -hmm. kind of weird. Like if, you know, if you don't forget about one of these movies, or you know, you'll, you'll miss it. But 30 days is a pretty good window. Yeah. So, in, so anyways, uh, thanks for talking with me, man. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you all for uh, letting us into your, your internet and uh, talk about movies and games. We enjoy it. We enjoy you. Uh, hope you all had a great Christmas. Hope you all have a great Sunday. As always, during the season, go Hawks. Go Hawks. We'll see you next year. We'll see you next year. Got the, the big, uh, what are we doing? Yeah, we're doing, we're going to do game of the year. Game of the year? Yeah. Are we doing top five or are we just doing game of the year? I have a top five list. All right, cool. So do I. All right, perfect. I'm a top five. And then I have some disappointments of the year, too. Nice, nice. I think we know oh, what yeah. it is. Yes. <laughs> I have a very <laughs> a very big disappointed one on there. All right. Well, see you guys. Love y'all. Take it easy.